My name is Matthew Green. I'm a co-founder at Sealants, and I'm one of the scientists who started this company. So I discovered Bitcoin in about 2010, 2011. And my first instinct was there's no way this could work. And, you know, after a couple of weeks, I figured out I was wrong about that. But I did notice that there were a lot of problems with it. And one of those problems was that there was no privacy in Bitcoin. Everybody could see every transaction you make. And so uh, my students, my graduate students and I spent a bunch of time figuring out how to solve that problem. And the result of that was ultimately a thing called Zcash, which is a privacy preserving currency. And that led to a lot of other things like Tornado Cash and other systems like that. And I also, uh, you know, worked on a bunch of problems related to cryptocurrency. But ultimately, I kind of realized that as much as I love privacy just for its own sake, Privacy in this kind of anybody can, you know, use privacy is great, but also we need to figure out how to make it so that people can adopt privacy. We can solve some of the problems with privacy tools. And that means figuring out how to solve compliance problems and build systems that are compatible with the existing financial infrastructure. Privacy is something we all take for granted, right? We, we start from the assumption that every time we do something, nobody is watching us, right? We go into the bathroom, we're, we're, we're in private, we go visit our friends, we're not announcing to the whole world that we do this. And none of this has to be explained to people, we just expect it. The problem is that cryptocurrency by itself does not start from the point of view of privacy. It starts from the point of view that everything you do is public and your neighbors and your friends and corporations can see it. And that's something we have to fix. We have to fix it in a way that obviously doesn't allow a lot of crime. And once we fix that, then we can at least get to the level of building something that's as useful as today's financial system. So Sealance does two or three really important things. The first is it adds privacy to cryptocurrency. The second is it adds a notion of identity, of who you are. And the third is it adds this concept of policy, that there are things that you can do and there are things that you can't do. And, you know, that sounds like it's putting limits on you, but the real impact of that is that now when you use this system, you know that you're part of a system of people who are all obeying the law and they're all compliant. You no longer have to explain to somebody that because you used a privacy-preserving system that now you're not a criminal because they know. Bitcoin obviously didn't start from the idea of having identities, and Ethereum didn't necessarily start from that either. Although I think people are starting to realize that identity is very important. The ability to have people know you are who you say you are, right? If you're voting, for example, you want to make sure that people can't vote 20 times, that they vote once. And so there are a lot of systems in crypto that really care about this notion of identity. And so the question now is, can we add identity? Can we add this notion of you are who you say you are without breaking the things that make crypto great? Right? Crypto is great because anyone can use it. It's an open, permissionless system. And the minute you start adding identity and things like that, it, it changes the setting a little bit. But how do we get to this place where you have choices, where you're not just going to one centralized party and asking for permission, but where you can have an identity and many people can assert that identity? So when you think about the way that normal crypto works, right, there are two big problems. The first is that you go in and everything is public right there on the chain. And so if you want to be a person who is going to prove that you are an actual human being, you have a lot of private information. You can't stick that information onto a blockchain. You can't have your social security number on a blockchain. And so we have to find a way to protect that information. And the second problem is that you want to be able to transact privately. You want to be able to actually have your transactions be in. And Sealance gives us the assurance using something called zero knowledge proofs. It gives us the assurance that you can prove to the world that you are doing something you're allowed to do, that you are who you say you are, without revealing that private information about who you are to anybody, except for the people you choose to reveal that information to. I think that we are coming up to a point where crypto, cryptocurrency, and even Web3 are about to become part of the traditional financial system. And that may not happen tomorrow, it may happen in five years, it may be coming soon, but there's a big shift coming where this technology is going to replace most of what we think of as the traditional 1970s era banking technology. And the problem right now is that we are not ready for that. The engineering, the technology of 
Web3 is getting to the point where it's almost ready for that. But if it doesn't have privacy, and if it doesn't have compliance, if we do things wrong, we end up with something that's arguably worse and less safe for people to use than any of the existing financial systems before that. I think that would be a very bad outcome, and sealants is our attempt to make sure that does not happen. Right now, compliance, regulatory compliance, is a very manual process. It involves bank officers poking through your records and looking at everything you did. It involves a lot of privacy violation. And where there is privacy, where you get privacy, is that nobody else outside the bank can look into your data. But it also locks you into a silo, right? You have to be inside of one bank. You can't move your money around. You can't do a lot of the things that Web3 is great at. What we're building is a system where you are free, where you can move around between different applications, you can move between different blockchains. You're not locked into a single centralized provider, but when you move, you carry your identity, you carry your policy with you. And so essentially, we're building a, the equivalent of a kind of a safe private space, but built as an overlay over the existing Web3 and crypto infrastructure. It's even more flexible than what we have today in the traditional financial system. So decentralized protocols today, many of them don't care about regulatory compliance. They don't care about identity. And I think that's a shame because there are a lot of users out there who really do care about that. Big institutional users want access to these systems. But also, I think a lot of people are sitting on the sidelines of crypto because they think it's dangerous. They think that there's, you know, there are scams going on. And one of the ways we can get rid of that fear is by making systems compliant. But the problem is that when DeFi, decentralized finance protocols, start to implement compliance, they often do it in a very scary way. Do you want to go to a protocol called PancakeSwap and give them your passport? Because that's, that's a thing that most people don't feel super comfortable with. And what we provide is a way to handle that assurance that your identity is safe, your personal information is safe, and you can access all of these different services without giving your personally identifiable information to some DeFi protocol. We are working with some of the biggest names in the space, and we're building a legal federation that works with many of the, the larger centralized finance companies that you know and trust. And our vision and our intention is that you don't have to trust us. We won't store your personally identifiable information. We're building a coalition of people you already trust or you can trust, and we will handle the, the infrastructure for carrying that trust out onto the network and for making the system work your information won't necessarily be stored with us unless you choose it to be. Right now, when you sign up for, let's say, an exchange on uh, a crypto exchange, you have to go through a process that's called Know Your Customer, KYC. And that means sending a picture of your passport, all your documents, sometimes bank statements, it's awful and it's unpleasant, it takes time. And also, if there's any kind of data breach, your information's lost and that has happened. And then if you sign up for another service, you have to do this again. And in a world with hundreds of services, this is too much friction. So one of the things that Sealance provides is the idea that we have one centralized place. You sign up for your KYC with a single company you trust and that information can now be relied on everywhere you go. You don't have to sign up when you go to one store for uh, this new service. One of the big problems that institutional investors cite when they talk about crypto is they don't want to dive into something that they see as full of crime, full of illegal behavior. They need to know that there's some assurance that when they dip their toes into this area, they're, they're doing something that you know, won't bring regulators knocking on their door. And this is a big part of what we're trying to build, is a system where people can identify who they are, that they're, they are compliant, so that everybody in that system is safe. The virtue of that system is not only is everybody, you know, asserting that they're, they're good and they're not going to commit crimes, but now there's an opportunity for companies to actually move in knowing that they're in a safe place. One of the problems that regulators are facing is that their technology is optimized for a traditional finance environment. It works very well there, but it doesn't translate well to the crypto setting where people work differently and the customers and the businesses operate differently. So they need a new paradigm and a new system that allows them to very quickly bring those regulatory compliance capabilities into these new networks. 
There are many people out there who are proposing centralized solutions. You put all of your customers into one silo, and then regulatory compliance will be very easy. But that's not how crypto works. Crypto is decentralized. There are many players, and the virtue of the space is these players can all work together, and, and new market entrants can come in, and they're not locked out. And this is the big danger, is that regulators will accidentally adopt a solution that harms crypto and locks out those new entrants, prevents technological progress. There are many in the crypto space who view regulation as something to be avoided. They, they don't necessarily hate the idea of regulation. They don't like the friction of regulation. When they ask for instructions from regulators on how they regulate their apps and their systems, they don't get good answers. And part of what Sealance is trying to do is be one of those good answers, to bring the answers to crypto so that they can be regulatory compliant without any effort without any friction, and regulators then benefit from having access to that technology. There are many different ways to think about privacy, and obviously privacy means nobody can see what you're doing, but that's not the only definition of privacy. Privacy means you choose who you interact with, and you choose who you share data with. And our approach at Sealance is to build a system where you can selectively choose where your data goes and who you share that information with. So if you have a counterparty and you want to engage in a transaction and they need to know some information about you, you can selectively choose to reveal that information without giving it to the whole world. And that ability to choose where your information goes is critical to any system that's going to allow compliance in the Web3 world. We've seen a lot of examples where Right now, users have to choose between no privacy at all, with sometimes very, very dire effects, and privacy, but privacy where criminals are operating on those privacy systems. We saw recently a system called Tornado Cash was sanctioned by the Treasury because North Korea was moving hundreds of millions of dollars of stolen funds through them. And there were a lot of innocent people on Tornado Cash who wanted privacy, but they were affected by the fact that this crime was happening and the system was shut down. So there is an incentive for normal users to have a place where they know they can get privacy, but they're not subject to being viewed as you know aligned with criminals or have their money questioned when they move it out of that system. And I think this is critical, is to provide privacy, but privacy that is reasonable and has limits on you know the amounts that you can move. And that in turn allows you to assure people that you're not a criminal. In 10 years, it's obvious that crypto public blockchains are going to eat at least a big portion of the financial system, the settlement system, the payment systems. That seems to be very obvious. So somebody needs to have a technology that allows you to have privacy, regulatory compliance, and safety for users. There are a lot of people out there who are proposing ideas for this, and many of those ideas are just unsafe. They don't have privacy. They don't protect users. So my vision, our hope, is that this system where we do protect user information, where we give users privacy and we give them choice, that this system is the system that wins, or even a system like it. But Sealance's system was designed from the ground up to be the most private and safe system that we could build. And so in 10 years, I would like that to be the standard, not something weaker. So crypto is going through this huge moment, right? We, we went through this enormous spurt of activity around DeFi, and then there was a, something of a crash, and now people are building new systems. Ethereum is improving itself finally to the point where you know maybe they'll actually do this thing called the merge. It seems to be happening right now. We're seeing people solve the technical problems. We're seeing people build out new systems that are fast, that are scalable, that solve many of the problems that are uh, environmentally friendly, many of the problems that people have criticized crypto for. And most of those problems are the things that will allow crypto to actually be useful for the world. The problem, of course, is that not every single one of those problems is solved, and Sealance is trying to solve one of them. But I definitely see a world where decentralized systems for storage, for access to uh, distributed computing, where payments are now possible, where there's competition in the banking sector, I think that we're going to see that world start to emerge. And I think that is going to happen in just the next few years. Zero-knowledge proofs are one of the most amazing 
technological innovations in the field of computer science. This idea that we can prove a statement, I can prove something to you, that something is true, and I can prove this without giving you any information other than the fact that this is true. So for example, I could prove to you that I really am the person I say I am, or that I have the, a driver's license that says my age, and I can prove that to you without you learning that my age is a specific age, which is something that you know I want to protect from you now. Now that I'm getting older, I'm just babbling. I don't know why I'm saying this. Um, so I can prove to you now that I have this information, this, this identity, these facts about my life. I can prove this to you without revealing any other information than the fact that this statement is true. And I can do this mathematically in a way that is cryptographically provable. That meaning the only way somebody could extract that information is if they solve a mathematical problem that we believe to be so hard it would take millions of years on a standard computer. So zero knowledge proofs have given us the ability to do many things we couldn't do. Like for example, have privacy on public blockchains or build scalability systems where we can take millions of transactions and compress them down into something very small so that we don't have to store all that information anywhere. They allow us to outsource information to untrusted people so we can have other people do computation for us and we can trust the results they give back. And all of these technologies together allow us to build new kinds of systems that would never have been possible 10 years ago. So one of the challenges with any technological solution is we can tell you all sorts of things about how it works at some deep level, but you need to make sure that human beings actually trust it and understand it. And part of that is just education, explaining this idea that zero knowledge can prove these things and trust us. But also part of it is making sure that we build systems that people can use, where they can see exactly what information they're providing. They can see that the system ensures that that information is not being given to anybody else. And that doesn't necessarily prove to them that the system is working as intended, but at least it gives them the assurance that we understand how to communicate with them, that we're not just asking them to trust this black box, that they have some visual input in what's happening in that system. So the Web3 world is a pretty diverse world. There are a lot of different viewpoints, uh, politically, that is, uh, on how things should work. One of the things I like about that is I like that there are people who have very out there views on politics, on how to run the world, and maybe they don't believe in things like the state, and they believe that the crypto community should be self-organizing. But also there are a lot of people who have exactly the opposite view. They see this as a technology that allows people to actually organize in useful ways and to achieve goals. And I think that the biggest thing to do here is to make sure that we don't put Web3 and cryptocurrency into a box where only certain portions of the human race are allowed to use it. We have to build systems that are actually useful for everybody. And regardless of your particular political leaning, whether you're a founder of this space and you believe that Satoshi Nakamoto had the right vision, or if you're more looking for something that will help people, that there is a technology there that allows you to do that, to trust the system. There are a lot of different people in the space. and. There are people who have many different views on how the world should work. And I think the, the major aspect of Web3 and crypto is that the system provides trust and allows people to interact, even if they don't necessarily agree on every single principle. But there have to be some guiding principles. There has to be some foundation that people can work with. Namely, that when we interact, we're doing things right. We're not interacting on a system that itself is harmful to the world. And I think that, that critical piece, that infrastructure has to be built, and then we can solve all the other problems.